The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. Three years ago, I got a call on a Saturday night. It was a young couple on the phone, and they were very worried. And they said, Rabbi Kron, we need chizuk. We're frightened. We need encouragement. And I said, what are you afraid of? What's going on? And the woman started talking, but then after a moment, she started crying. She couldn't talk anymore. And her husband continued. But the woman said, I'm expecting a baby in two weeks. So I said, so why are you crying? You should be so happy. What are you nervous about? That's the happiest moment in a woman's life that she's able to give birth to a healthy child. And she started crying and she couldn't talk. And her husband said, Rabbi, last year my wife was also expecting. And we went into the hospital on Friday afternoon and Friday night. The baby was born, not alive, stillborn. The baby wasn't born alive. And we were so shocked. We couldn't believe it. The pregnancy was perfect. And the doctors were shocked. They couldn't believe it. How could that be? The whole pregnancy was perfect. How could this baby not be born alive? And we cried all night. We cried all night. We cried in the morning, Shabbat morning. And that's what we're nervous about. We don't want the same thing. Chas v'shalom should happen again. That's why we're asking you for chizuk and encouragement. And now I'm positive. I'm not the only one that they called. I'm sure they must have called 10 rabbis besides me. But I said to them, I want to tell you what to do. And I'm telling you, if you follow what I tell you, you'll see in two weeks, the baby's going to be born and the baby is going to be healthy and everything's going to be wonderful. And I told them as follows. Now, I don't know if you have Sidurim in front of you, but you could write this down and you'll be able to look it up later. I told them, take out your Tehillim and I want you to look at two chapters, chapter 127 and chapter 128, Kuf and Kuf Ches. And then they opened their Tehillim and we read it together. And it says like this, Chichitzim biyad hagibor, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, Cain b'nei hanodim, that's how children are. A warrior stands here, he shoots an arrow, it goes out far and it accomplishes far away what it's supposed to do. And that's what children are. You raise children here in this neighborhood and then you send them out and they accomplish far away. And then I said, take a look at the next chapter, 128. It says, Your wife will be like a fruitful vine in the inner chambers of your home. But now your children, they will be like olive sprouts. Olive sprouts are fresh throughout the whole year. They'll be vibrant and encouraging and lebedic and lively, just like olives are fresh a whole year. That's what your kids are going to be. I said, I don't want you to tell anybody what I'm telling you, but I want both of you to say 127 and 128 every day, and you'll see the baby's going to be born, and it's going to be healthy, and everything's going to be fine. We hung up the phone. Two weeks later, on a Saturday night, the guy calls. He says, Rabbi Krohn. In a second, I recognized his voice. Well, when he said Rabbi Krohn that way, I knew it was good. And I said, wow, what happened? He said, well, we get a mazel tov. We had a baby girl. Now, I'm a moel. I was going to tell him you should have had a boy, but I didn't. I controlled myself. But the point was, of course, I was so happy for him. And I gave him a baracha. And I told him he should have mazal. It should be the beginning of a large family. And I was just about to hang up the phone. And then he says, wait, Rabbi. I've got to tell you something. I've got to tell you a story that I didn't tell you two weeks ago when I called you the first time. I said, what's that? He said, remember I told you that the baby that was born not alive was born Friday night and we cried all night. And Shabbat morning, we were still crying, but we were outside in Deal, New Jersey, in Long Branch, and I knew there was a synagogue on the block of the hospital. So I said to my wife, it's Shabbat. I think I should go to the synagogue to pray. And listen to this, he tells me. I came into the synagogue. By the time I came into synagogue, they were holding Kriyat Torah. They were reading the Torah. And just as I walked in, imagine this. I'm coming in from such sadness. I walk in at the Torah. Yaakov Chweki, the famous singer, is getting an Aliyah la Torah. He just had a baby girl and everybody is singing. Sim Tova Mazel Tov. Could you imagine what I felt like? I walk in here so sad. And here, the nicest guy, everybody loves him. He had a baby girl. Everybody's singing Simon Tov and Mazel Tov. Of course, I went over to him like everybody else and I said Mazel Tov. And then they made him a big kiddush after the prayers, after Musaf. 
And during the Kiddush, I went over to him. I said, Yaakov, can I speak to you privately after the Kiddush? My wife wants I should ask you something. He said, of course. It's no question. Don't worry. I'll be here. I'm not leaving until we speak. And sure enough, there was a big Kiddush. Everybody left. And he tells me, me and Yaakov, we were in the synagogue alone. And I said to him, he's telling me the story. I said to Yaakov, Yaakov, we had a terrible tragedy last night. The baby wasn't born alive. We want to cry. We need to cry. We got to get it out of our system. And we know that you sing a certain song so beautifully like nobody else. Mama Rachel cry. Could we come to your house tonight? We'll come straight from the hospital and just sing it for us. And we'll cry together. We just got to get it out of our system. And Yaakov says, of course, don't rush out of the hospital. I'll wait for you past midnight. Just come to my house. I'll be there for you. He says, Rabbi, you wouldn't believe it. We got there, it was close to midnight, and he sang the song for us, and we all cried. I want to read you one of the chorus lines, the, right, the refrain. Mama Rachel, cry for us again. Won't you shed a tear for your dear children? If you raise your sweet voice now as then, the day will come. He said, not only did he sing that, he sang that beautiful song, Rachem. Rachem means Hashem have compassion that we lost the base of Mikdash. And he gave us CDs and he gave us Chizuk and he spent so much time with us. I said, I can't believe it. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. And I was thinking, this guy, Yaakov Chweki, you know how much money he makes when he gives a concert? And he has a couple, he doesn't even know that. And he's taking his talent that God gave him and he's giving it to this couple. Endlessly, without any questions. Incredible. Now, at that time, at that time, I was making recordings for a certain school here in Far Rockway, Rabbi Groner's Yeshiva. They send out many recordings every day on Mishnayis, on Halakha, Hashkafa, and Chumash, whatever, Gemara. And they wanted that I should make recordings about stories of Chesed. So I figured this story is fabulous. A guy like Yaakov Chweki does a Chesed like this. I called him up. I said, Yaakov, you know, I would like to use this story as one of my chesed recordings. And he says to me, Rabbi Krohn, please don't tell the story. I said, then why shouldn't I tell the story? He says, you know why I do all these things? I do it so I should get reward in the Olam HaEmet. After 120 years, I want to get reward. I'm afraid if you tell the story, I'm going to get less reward. I said to him, Yaakov, you're a bigger tzaddik than I thought you were. I said, I want to tell you something. Why do you do what you do? Because singers who came before you, older guys than you, like Mordechai ben David, Avram Fried, and Shlemy Dax, they all do this. They all go to hospitals. They go to children's homes that are challenged. And they sing for the parents. They sing for the kids. You learned it from them. If you let me tell the story, and you let me write the story, people will learn from you. You'll get much more reward in the Lama I met. He said, Rabbi, you really believe that? I said, of course I believe it. He said, okay, fine, you can tell the story. But think about that. Think about that. Here is a person who brought out his best. Here is a person who has a talent. Of course, we don't have that talent. And we can't do what he does. But there's certain things that we can do that he can't do. And therefore, that's what Hashem wants. Take your talent and give it to other people. Bring out the best that you can. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.